On this episode of the Hockey Nuts Podcast, we get you caught up with all the headlines from the past couple of weeks in the hockey world, including Patrick Waugh quitting on his team, where Jimmy VC will be playing next season, and we get you caught up on all the free agent news from the past week. We also discuss the upcoming World Cup of Hockey Tournament, and we take our first look at how the expansion draft process will work with the new Las Vegas team. All this next in a jam-packed episode of the Hockey Nuts Podcast. Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Hockey Nuts Podcast. My name is Wayne, I'm here with Steve, and we are here to talk about another week, actually a couple of weeks in, in the uh, world of hockey. How's it going, Steve? Going great, going great. Good good to be with you tonight. I'm excited to talk to you about things. Good, good. But before we get going, I want to uh, take care of a couple of little things. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I was uh, playing around with, um, you know, our uh, email and such, and I found out that the email address that I gave out last week was not working, and I only figured that out a, a couple of days ago. So I apologize for that. If you had sent an email uh, to feedback at thehockeynuts.com, we never received it. So um, it's all working now, though. I got it working. I've done a few test emails. Everything is is up to date and working and uh so if you have sent an email assume that we didn't get it and if you want to go ahead and send in a question some feedback anything that you have for the show go ahead and send it to feedback at the hockey nuts.com and we will definitely get it and we will address your questions or concerns or uh or comments uh on the next uh on the next episode uh, also, related to that, if you don't feel like typing out an email, I came up with a voicemail line that you can actually call uh, and leave your feedback verbally, uh, and we can actually take that. It creates a little MP3 file, and we can actually take that, add it to the show, and then address your question right then and there uh, without you having to type anything. And in order to do that, all you have to do is dial area code 919-960-1718. And again, it's a 919-960-1718. It doesn't ring any phones. You can call any time, day or night. You don't have to worry about waking up either one of us. Uh, and, and we'll uh, get the voicemail and we'll uh, address your question on the next episode. So with that aside, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Very good. <clears throat> All right. So we'll get started with some of the headlines that have happened over the past couple of weeks. And actually, it's really been slow for the past couple of weeks. It seems like all 30 teams are pretty much all on vacation at the same time. I don't know. I don't know about you, but uh, finding stuff to talk about was a little bit tricky this time around. Uh, but it should start picking up here because we are getting closer to World Cup. But the biggest thing that I saw, and I think you'd agree with me, Steve, was the Patrick Wall leaving the Colorado Avalanche. Yes, that's what I have at the top of my list. <clears throat> and that was that was pretty <laughs> surprising. Um, you know, first of all, it's a surprise that a coach would quit on the team like that. Uh, generally, it's the team firing the coach, or at least that's the way it's been the last several years. Right. So the fact that Patrick Waugh left, and I listened to uh, the Joe Sackick, the general manager, had a uh, – uh, conference call, press conference, uh, a day or so after the after the announcement, and um, he admitted in the conference call that he was kind of taken off guard by that. So um, he actually tried to talk Patrick into staying, uh, asking him if he wanted to reconsider for a couple of days before going public with it, and uh, Patrick said no. He was felt really comfortable with the decision, and he just wanted to. Uh, Go ahead and move on. I don't know what your thoughts on it. I, you know, um, well, I, you know, I like Patrick Roy. I, I don't have, uh, uh, yeah, I know, uh, I know how Boston fans are with uh, with the Canadians. 
and a lot of them, you know, is that's a, an incredibly strong rivalry. And I don't have the same type of feelings uh, one way or the other inside about it. But, uh, yeah, I, I always liked him. When I was a kid growing up, Patrick Roy was the goalie. I mean, he was uh, just a tremendous force for Montreal. Um, you know, they built a, a great team in the 70s, and he came along after that, and they built another great team, and then he went to Colorado. But, I, you know, I... I you know I just don't I, I see I see what happened and I read read an article or two about it I don't know you know behind the scenes what was going on with him and maybe uh, in in a month or so things might shake out a little further and we might find out some more information if it's if it's in regards to him uh, being available for another team uh, that may be a reason why he did it and of course he's not. Uh, uh, Privy, he, he doesn't have to tell anybody about that. But uh, you know that uh, immediately, I'm sure that sent up some rumors and all kinds of flurries in in the city of Montreal. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's there's interest there and uh, probably all kinds of stuff going on. But yeah, well, what I had seen based on some of the stuff that came from his camp was that he was kind of unhappy with the direction that Colorado was going. Uh, apparently, they weren't building a strong team fast enough for him. Um, and it seemed like he wanted to have more say in the choice of the players, kind of the old Bill Parcells, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, if he's, if they want him to cook the meal, they should at least let him pick the groceries kind of, you know, yeah. kind of like what Parcells said back a few years back. People in Montreal, uh, are definitely split on, at least from what I can tell on this, uh, I think some say, oh, great, we got our next coach all lined up. He certainly fits the bill. You know, you, I made a comment in the past that you got to be able to speak French in order to uh, coach the Montreal Canadiens. And, well, they, they can check that one off the list. Yeah. Um, it's a different ownership group and a different coach than, than uh, when he uh, was there, uh, which it would be good for him because, uh, um, you know, he left there kind of bad uh, in the first place. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up as Montreal's coach at some point down the line, but, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, uh, he, you know, it's a guy with a huge ego and, yeah. and I think the ego there just made him decide, you know, to just give up on the avalanche for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I'll tell you something about him. I mean, he's no nonsense guy and he doesn't waste time when it comes to talking to players, disciplining players, you know, I, I give you an example, uh, and I don't know whether it was um, the Winter Classic uh, where I heard this, but, you know, his brother, uh, who tried to get into hockey, uh, made it as a, as a, as a rock a folk singer, a rock singer, et cetera, et cetera, uh, with, with a band, and I do not know the name of them. But I know that he tried to get into hockey and worked his way uh, through, you know, he spent a lot of time with it and, but he wasn't successful. And, uh, you know, the way he, I remember the story, the way he told it, he said one day he got a call from, uh, Patrick, uh, it might've been his son. I'm not sure. Maybe it wasn't his brother, but it might've been his son. And, uh, Patrick, uh, Roy just said, listen, you know, I, I'd be cut right to the chase. You're not cut out for the NHL. You're not cut out for hockey. You're not going to make it to the NHL. So if you got something else you feel like doing, you should do it. Hmm. I mean, he just, you know, and that, and a lot of times, you know, you'll see family members say, Hey, give it a try here. Give it a try. That's not the way he, he it's not the way he operates. That's not the way he is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, uh, he, he may have felt, Hey, I, I don't really have anything else to say. I, I've done my, my time here in Colorado and that's it. I, you know, that may really be what happened and he just left. Um, Things were going the way he wanted to, it to go, and he wasn't going to waste any more time with it. Um, yep. You know, that could be the way it is. Yep. Well, it'll be something worth monitoring in the future because, I, I, like I said, I think I, I could see him ending up. Um, I don't think I'd see him end, ending up a coach anywhere else but Montreal. But I, I agree with you. But I think you're right. right. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So we'll let, we'll let that aside. We'll uh, keep an eye on that one for now, but let's go ahead to the next one. The next one I've got on my list is uh, the Jimmy VC situation. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's been, uh, here it is. It's, it's Wednesday, the 17th. 
uh, today as we record this, and it's just been a lot over the last couple of days, tons and tons of speculation of where he's going to go. And even today, some more stories came out that there are a lot of celebrities really, really pushing him to sign with the Rangers. Yes, I saw so, <laughs> that. I saw that article. So there's a bunch of people that want him in the Rangers. There's a bunch of people that want him to sign. You know, everybody's trying to get him to sign somewhere, and and it's it's become a bit of a zoo in the last few days, really, on whether yeah. or not you know where this guy is going to sign. Um, you know, Detroit had a meeting with him a couple of days ago, and they said uh, that uh, they tried getting him, but he told them he wanted to play closer to home. So. You would think that would leave uh, teams like Chicago out, but apparently Chicago is still in the mix, even right. though Chicago's further away from his home than Detroit. Right. Um, you know, uh, I understand why he'd want to go there. You know, if you if winning a Stanley Cup is important to him, um, you know, there's no better place to go than Chicago among the among the teams that uh, he has on his short list. Um, uh-huh. But other than Chicago, you've got uh, you know Buffalo is still in the mix. Uh, you've got Toronto, Boston. Uh, I've heard a lot about the Rangers, New Jersey. I don't know if there's any other teams there. Those are the names that, that came to mind. Yeah, uh, that he was interested in. Uh, I think they're possibly Toronto. I don't know if I mentioned them. Uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, Toronto. Uh, is... Honestly, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up signing with Buffalo after everything is said and done. I could see it. You know, they're they're <laughs> wide open in terms of being able to to put him on a line quickly. He'll be he'll be you know he'll be on maybe the second line or say. I mean, he'll yeah. be playing hockey the first night that they put him on. So yeah, and they're and they're a good you know and they're going to be a good team. Maybe not this year, but um, in two to three years, they're they you know they're going to be a good team. Um, yep. With all the with all the young players that they've been stashing away on that roster. You so, know what. I hear I hear this kind of talk a chatter go on a lot with players, uh, w- whether it's hockey or you know football, whatever. About uh, New York is talking to them and et cetera, et cetera. So I I was I was kind of like holding that aside and saying you know oh yeah this is just another rumor. But if you go on the website uh, and you you pull up the New York media, there's several articles uh, recently in the last couple of days that seem to suggest that there is some interest. I think he did meet with the Rangers personnel today. Yeah, I believe today he did. And uh, I, I have a quote in the New York Daily New, uh, excuse me, New York Post from his agent. And he said it like this, and I quote, I, I think to any, um, any free agent, the Rangers are an interesting option. It's special playing in the Big Apple. To be honest, it looks like there are a couple of holes in their lineup that he could fit into, meaning G- uh, Jimmy Vesey. Um, if it were one of those years where the Rangers were just stacked from the first line to the third line, then maybe it would be difficult. No, excuse me, it would be different. I couldn't envision a scenario where the Rangers wouldn't want to make a pitch, and they would definitely be a possibility. So he is interested in New York, um, and it, that may be as far as it goes. Uh, they definitely have a spot for him, but uh, he may want to play in Boston. I, I mean, you know, uh, that may be exactly where he'd go outside of Buffalo. Yeah, and I'm getting the sense that he wants to, he almost wants to be in Boston, but does Boston want him? That's, that's. I haven't seen a lot of talk on on. He he is in fact meeting with the Bruins, but they they don't seem to be at least not in 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 the press or out in public. They don't seem to be pursuing him as aggressively as some of these other teams are. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, could of course, be. you know, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but at least out in the public light, it doesn't seem to be, you know, and you've got all these, uh, you know, celebrity Rangers fans that, that, you know, show up to the games when they're good and you don't hear from them when they, they, they're not, but right. <laughs> that's another story. That's uh, right. But they're pushing hard for him to go there anyway. So, yeah. So the latest on him is we're still waiting. And uh, as soon as uh, we have anything, we'll, uh, well, we'll certainly have an update for you in the next uh, episode for sure. Right. Um, now, in terms of Jimmy VC, uh, the reason there's so much hype with him is he's obviously, or at least he's considered the best 
uh, unrestricted free agent currently not signed uh, at the moment. Um, I did want to touch on a bunch of the other players that are still out there. Um, most teams have pretty much got their rosters pretty settled at this point. I just finished um, uh, updating the hockeynuts.com uh, blog with a bit of a, a midsummer update on each and every team in the NHL. I've been writing those over the last couple of weeks, and uh, they're available. Is I'm releasing one every day, and they're available on the hockeynuts.com website, and you can go right on and see if your team's out there. Uh, pretty much I've got three of the four divisions already out in the public, and uh, the Metropolitan Division is being released one at a time throughout uh, this week and into uh, next week. Um, but basically, you got one blog post being released every single day, and it just gives you an update of wh where each team is, um, you know, what their roster looks like. If they have any restricted free agents, they still have left to sign. Uh, if they have any holes on their roster that they still need to fill. And when I went through and did all these, I've noticed that most teams are pretty much set. Uh, I don't think there's any teams with any more than two restricted free agents to sign. But so this list of players that are that are currently unrestricted free agents are essentially a bunch of guys that are uh, veterans that would probably come at a high price. Some of these guys may have already decided to retire. You know, some of them have a, a you know a long history with the league, and uh, some, like I said, may already be retired, and some are are contemplating it as we speak but i just wanted to run down the list that i had of guys um i'll just list them off real quick and then if you have any comments on any of these guys you can uh you can hit me at the end but um here's the list i have uh sean horkoff brian mcgratton steve downey nicholas grossman anders lindback alex tangay max talbot carlo koliakovo david leguan Jonas hiller kari ramo zach boychuk michael Jordan. Uh, Christian Erhoff, Thomas Fleshman, Jay Harrison, Michael Roosevelt, Jack Skilly, Jesse Winchester, Renee Bork, Travis Moen, Chris Russell, Joaquin and Anderson, Daniel Cleary, Kyle Quincy, Eric Greiba, Nikita Nikitin, Yuri Hoodler, Willie Mitchell, Jonas Enroth, uh, Brett Sutter, Ryan Carter, Ru Ruslan Fedotenko, David Jones, Jarrett Stahl, uh, Mike Brown, John Scott, Paul Gostad, Patrick Eliash, Stephen Gianta, Tyler Kennedy, Tuomo Rutu, Yuri Tulusti, Marek Zidlicki, Dominic Moore, Daniel Paye, Scott Gomez, Chris Phillips, Tim Brent, Ray Emery, Matt Cullen, Dania Zubras, Matthias Olin, Brad Boys, Matt Barkowski, Brandon Pruss, Mike Richards, and Grant, Grant Klitsum. So that's the list of guys probably of the best remaining free agents. And, you know, obviously there's nobody that is going to be a team changer among that group. These would, right. be, these would be mostly depth guys if any of these guys get signed. Right. Uh, none of the name, you know, surprise uh, that you said Brandon Pruss there near the end because he, he was a solid player for the New York Rangers and they were sorry to see him go. And he is a fan, he is a fan favorite at the Garden. Yeah, it hasn't been you know two three years since he left, so some of these guys uh, they may get picked up uh, you know as a depth type player, which is what Brandon Prust was. Yeah, uh, he's a banger, but you know there's those guys out there like him. That and I think I think this some of these guys like Brandon Prust, you, you know, and you also got uh, uh, you know there's uh, several other guys on here that that are known as bangers. They're known as uh, I don't know if you want to call them goons, but that term has been used to describe some of these guys in the past. Mm -hmm. Certainly guys like John Scott, you know, he was your, right. he was your all-star game MVP last year, but <laughs> you know, truth be told, he's really not much more than a guy who's, you know, big, huge guy with a pair of fists. Um, and the game is changing. You know, that, that part of the game is going away slowly, but surely it is disappearing like yeah. it or not. I mean, you know, some people like it, some don't. I'm kind of indifferent. You know, it's it's kind of fun to watch when you're in, you know, at the game, watch two guys go at it that way. But um, does it add anything to the game? I don't know. 
Um, but a lot of the guys on this list are guys that, that uh, you know, that's a big part of their game. And, you know, you're seeing the signs of it that they're, that part of the game's going away and that these guys are still without jobs and looking for jobs. Mm-hmm. And then there's a bunch of guys, uh, you know, a, a, I would say probably half or more of that, of that list that I just read off are guys that are north of 35 years old and guys like that are not only expensive, but they have, uh, they can, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot they can add to a team unless they've got a lot of, uh, you know, Stanley cup rings that they can draw on that experience. Right. I, I yep. Yeah. And, and some of those players, you may never pull their name out and, and speak about them again. They've, they've made a decision to, to hang it up and they're, they're gone. Um, in, in the case of Ruslan Fedotenko, I, I was surprised when he left and went to Philadelphia, but he may be, that may be it for him, you know? Yeah. And he was, he was on a Stanley cup team. He was with the Tampa Bay lightning when they won in 2004. Right. Uh, so, you know, you got a few of those guys out there, yep. uh, that you mentioned and, uh, you know, so it's surprising, but, uh, for the most part, uh, I, you know, I didn't, I, for example, Zach Boychek, you brought him up. I, I thought he was still with the hurricanes. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of those guys or Michael Jordan was also, uh, one of their defensemen last year, but, you know, Car- Carolina did, you know, speaking of that team. Most of the guys they got rid of were basically getting rid of some of these guys that haven't been able to take them to the next level. Um, and they're cleaning them out, sweeping them away to make room for some of these young kids that they've got coming up through. Uh, and I think that's a big part of the reason why I'm pretty high on the Canes. I don't think they're going to, you know, they're not going to win anything significant this year, but uh, they're going to be better. And uh, and it's because they've got these young kids coming up through. Once they gain some experience, that team's going to be one of those that you got to watch out for. So, I agree. So okay, well, if you unless you have anything to add on those uh, free agents, we'll go ahead and move on. Yes, sir. Uh, the next story I've got is just a couple of minor signings. There really haven't been a lot of free agent signings this uh, in, in the last two weeks. But there's two that I that have come up just this week. One is Antoine Vermette signing with Anaheim on a two-year, $3.5 million contract. Mm-hmm. And Radim Verveda signed with Phoenix for a year at a, at a million. Um, both of these guys obviously are veterans. Uh, and I think they were signed to be more locker room, locker room presence guys rather yeah. than, you know, a first line, second line type players. Um, yeah. But... You know, they just wanted to add uh, a big boy in the room <laughs> that, that can help. <laughs> Both these teams are, are younger teams, and you know that they want to, you know, help these guys get through to the next level, pretty much. Yes, sir. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I know I've seen Radim Verbata Ver play quite a bit. Uh, Arizona kept him. Uh, he's part of their core, and uh, you know, going forward, I can I can see that uh, they probably couldn't part ways with someone like him and, uh, and leave him open to the market. They, they had to put, pull him in uh, yeah. for Antoine Vermette. I mean, I could see him being an expansion guy, somebody that Las Vegas would be interested in. Yeah. And it's, it's if probably, it yeah, it's, it's, it, and it, when I was looking through some of the expansion stuff and we'll get to that, um, I noticed that he was he almost looked like he was signed in order to expose him. A very good point. That's an excellent point. And I think some teams are already starting to do that, or they already have been doing that, mm-hmm. signing them because uh, they can get rid of them at some point uh, through the expansion draft. Mm-hmm. So, yep. so okay. Well, we'll go ahead and move on to the next story I've got. Um, they also announced, uh, I think it was last week. I can't remember the exact day that they did, but... They announced the uh, the full preseason schedule, which is kind of good because I was looking at, you know, trying to put together a preseason schedule for, um, you know, see where all the teams are. And they hadn't released the full schedule yet, but they did this uh, about a week or so ago. They announced the preseason schedule. The games basically run from September 25th to October 10th. And I just want to highlight some of the neutral site games um, that are going to be taking place. First and foremost, there's going to be two games being played at the at the new Vegas NHL Arena. Um, 
and both games are all are going to be featuring the Kings, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Kings have traditionally played at least one game in Vegas every year, and these will be the last games they're saying that the Kings will be playing in Vegas because you got the new team coming next year. But the Kings will play Dallas on the 7th of October and the Avalanche on the 8th. Um, so the preseason essentially is starting later and running later, and I think that's um, usually by the 10th of October. We're into the regular season, but right. but the 10th of October is still going to be preseason this year. Uh, the regular season doesn't start till the 12th. And I think that's due to the uh, – in fact, I know it's due to the uh, World Cup tournament. Right. Uh, also, you have the Kraft Hockeyville games that are going to be taking place during the preseason. Uh, the Canadian one, the original one, is going to be at, is uh, awarded to Lumbee, B.C., and the game is going to be taking place at the Cal Tire Place in Vernon, B.C., uh, and the Oilers will be playing the Kings in that one on October 2nd. And the American Kraft Hockeyville game is going to take place at Lakeview Arena in Marquette, Michigan. Mm-hmm. where our hometown ca- uh, Hurricanes are going to be going up to play the Sabres in that one. Why they didn't include the Red Wings, I'm not sure. But um, my guess is the Hurricanes don't grab, because uh, I think the Hurricanes are technically the home team in that game. And the Hurricanes generally give up one or two of their home games every spring because they j- typically don't draw well for the preseason here. Um, so they gave it up. They'll probably get a bigger crowd in that little arena in Marquette than, than, they, than they will at the PNC Arena. Yeah. Um, and as far as the other neutral site games, you'll have basically teams playing mostly at either minor league facilities or other small arenas uh, within their uh, their fan base footprint. Uh, so you got the Wild playing the Sabres at uh, Penn State University. That's a college That's rink. Interesting. Yep, and that's mm-hmm. a brand new that's a brand new facility there. It may have opened last year, but um, you know they just went Division One at Penn State a couple of years ago, so that's a up and coming college hockey program there. Um, so the that game will be taking place, and the New Jersey Devils will be playing the Florida Panthers at West Point on October eighth. So that'll be a Almost kind of like the uh, the baseball game that took place not far from here at uh, uh, in Fayetteville. I can't remember who. I was trying to think of who played in that game, but irrelevant. It's baseball, but yeah, <laughs> they're they're basically got you know they got a hockey game for the troops. Essentially, is what right. what that is. So yeah, that's the bottom line there. Uh, also, the Senators will be playing the Leafs at Scotia Bank Center in Halifax. Uh, that's I'd have to look at the affiliations, but that's probably American Hockey League affiliate for one of those two teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Devils will be playing the Flyers in Allentown, PA at the PPL Center on September 28th. The Sabres will be playing the Leafs at the Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario. Obviously going to be a pro Leafs crowd there. Wow, that will be. Yep. That they'll be... <laughs> Maple Leafs fans flocking there. Yep. Uh, the Caps will be playing the Islanders at Webster Bank Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, I believe Bridgeport is the Islanders' uh, farm team. I could be wrong on that, but pretty sure they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Stars will be playing the Panthers at Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario. So, again, you know, trying to hit. There's a lot of these preseason games in Ontario where they're. Um, you know, just, uh, I mean, Ontario is just loaded with hockey fans, so they yeah. can play in any small arena and sell the place out. Oh, yeah. uh, the the Bruins will be playing the Canadiens at uh, Center Videotron in Quebec City. Uh, interesting point on that one is if Quebec ever does get awarded an NHL franchise, uh, that arena will be their home ice. Yes. I watched the fights there. Maybe two or three weeks ago in Quebec City. Yep. And it's a good, that's a beautiful, in fact, they mentioned that. Uh, they, while the fights were going on, that that's, that, you know, if Quebec yep. City gets a team, that that's where it'll be. And they're, uh, they're pushing hard to get one. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared to death that it could be the Canes moving there, but we're, we're, <laughs> we're all yeah. hoping that it, that, that doesn't come to fruition. So right. 
We just need Canes fans to show up at the at the games, and and you know we, we can make sure they stay here if everybody just goes to the games here. Um, the Leafs will be playing the Senators at Saskatel Center in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, that's another uh, small arena, but in a hockey mad city. Uh, I don't think Saskatoon is ever going to be big enough to support an NHL team, but. Right. Uh, but, but they, they certainly will have the fans coming there to. <laughs> to they'll to certainly watch that. sell that place out, yeah. Oh yeah, especially two Canadian teams. Capitals and the Blues will play at Sprint Center in Kansas City, so that's across the state from uh, St. Louis. Uh, so they'll get some uh, Blues fans there that can't make their way all the way to St. Louis. They'll get to taking their game there. The Sabers and the Hurricanes at SR Center in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. So that's another home game, quote, home game for the Carolina Hurricanes. They, they gave up two of their home games um, to go play at neutral site arenas. That's why, that's why we only have two preseason games here this year. Red Wings and the Leafs will play at First Ontario Center in Hamilton, Ontario. That's another city that has pushed to get uh, a team, was Hamilton. Um, not recently, but over the years, Hamilton has, you know, been mentioned in, in expansion talk. But Toronto says, or the Leafs say, that that's too close to their uh, territory and they won't allow it. Right. So, aren't, aren't the Bulldogs an, NA, an AHL team? Do they have an AHL franchise? There? I, yes, yes, the Hamilton yeah. Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, and there was I, a time I, way back when when Hamilton had an, uh, an NHL team, but that was... Way, way, way back, way back before, you know, before the original six. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That that city's big enough. Believe me, they can support a team. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, they they can definitely support a team, but Toronto that's Toronto's uh, area, and they won't allow it. They, you know, they're gonna fight it, yeah. which I find kind of funny because if the city of New York can support two, actually three teams, if you count the de- the Devils, right. Um, then the city of Toronto should be able to support at least two. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know how it goes. Right. The wings don't want, or the, the Leafs don't want to give up on that. And rightly so, you know, they're, they have a territory, they have a fan base and they don't want it. They don't want it uh, getting eaten away by another team. Right. So, so anyway, we'll go on to uh, another news story. Another thing that came up on the 10th, uh, was ESPN's John Saunders passing away. Uh, died at the age of 61. And it was very sudden. Um, very quiet on details. Uh, but if, for those of you that don't know, John Saunders is... Um, well, first of all, he's the one of the hosts for the sports reporters uh, on ESPN. But he was a hockey guy. He was born and brought up in Canada... Uh, played college hockey uh, here in the U.S. And when ESPN had the uh, NHL contract before NBC had it, uh, he was the studio host for most of the games for the NHL. So he was always a hockey guy. He's always had a love for the game and a big part of it. Um, but to hear that he suddenly passed away and you know, looking into some of the details and some of the stories, it sounds like um, it may have been, um, I guess suspicious is the wrong word, but certainly not natural. Mm. So there's a lot of speculation that he may have uh, possibly taken his own life. But um, nobody's confirming anything. You know, it's all hearsay, but they're certainly not saying, oh, he had a massive heart attack and died. You know, they're... You know, everyone's being very quiet on how he died. They're just saying he passed away suddenly. Mm-hmm. So, and he was scheduled to be the um, studio host for the World Cup tournament yeah. for ESPN. So, obviously, they're uh, going to have to do something different there. But very sad story, very sad to hear that uh, he passed away because he always was uh, very good at what he did. Yes. Yes. So, moving on to a lighter note. Um, St. Louis 
was announced this week, or actually it was announced back in March that they were going to be the site of the Winter Classic. But uh, Gary Bettman likes to do his production where he goes to the venue that the the Winter Classic is going to take place. He likes to go there in the summertime and, you know, put the rink out on the field, you know, like make it look like the rink is there and, <laughs> you know, have, have, do a big to-do, big announcement. Well, he did that this week announcing that St. Louis is going to be the site of the Winter Classic. It's going to take place on January 2nd this year instead of the 1st. And I believe the reason for that is, um, I think here in the U.S., excuse me, here in the U.S., January 2nd is going to be the observed holiday for January 1st because New Year's Day, I believe, falls on a Sunday this year. Mm -hmm. So they had traditionally done the Winter Classic on the 1st. I'm kind of disappointed that that they didn't do it on the first this year, uh, you know, keep that tradition alive. But uh, for whatever reason, they're doing it on the second this year. Most people will be off. I'll probably be working, but <laughs> most <laughs> most people will be off on the second uh, anyway because the first is on a Sunday, and you know they got to take an extra day off for for the holidays. So right. uh, they're going to be playing the Blackhawks uh, again. Getting sick and tired of seeing the Blackhawks in these outdoor <laughs> games, if you ask me. Um, I know Boston's played in two of them, but it'd be nice if they change it up and have different teams, teams that haven't played. I know Carolina hasn't played a single game on the outdoor ice yet. Um, not that they, you know, until they become a real strong team, I don't see them <laughs> playing in an outdoor game anytime in the future. Yeah. I, uh, I I think uh, I think it's again it's, it's for ratings of course and there's a lot of Blackhawk fans that will tune into the game. Is it at Bush Stadium? I, I didn't. It is at Bush Stadium at the baseball field. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of thing always draws people. You know, uh, when they go to the ballparks, uh, they seem to to really uh, create a lot of uh, you know the the desire to go see the game to watch the game on TV that that type of thing. It becomes very strong. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, you know, right with that. St. Louis, Chicago does have that central division rivalry, so you can't fault them there. But um, I believe Chicago's played in uh, at least one outdoor game each of the last three seasons. And I, I just feel that, it, you know, they should give it to somebody else for a change. Yeah. You know, let 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 somebody else who hasn't played an outdoor game play. But who am I? They're not, <laughs> they're not going to listen to us. So, yeah. Now, on a related note, Edmonton and Winnipeg also um, did an announcement in the last couple of weeks that their Heritage Classic game, um, Edmonton is going to play Winnipeg uh, on the 23rd of October at mm -hmm. Winnipeg Investors Group Field uh, in Winnipeg. And they announced, well, they basically unveiled the jerseys that the teams are going to wear and they announced the alumni rosters for the alumni game that's going to take place on the 22nd. They did all that on the uh, on the 5th of uh, August. Um, so it's kind of interesting. We were talking about it a couple of days ago, uh, some of the some of the players that are going to be showing up for this alumni event and uh, the Edmonton Oilers team is basically a who's who of the of the Edmonton Oilers of the uh, the dynasty years in the 80s. You know, yeah. uh, all the big names are going to be there. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Gretzky, uh, Messier, Curry, uh, Kevin Lowe, Grant Fuhr, Paul Koff. I mean, you name it. They're all going to be there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, back in those years, Winnipeg wasn't that good. Um, and, of course, you had a lot of years where Winnipeg didn't even have a team, so the, they can't get any alumni players from those years. Um, yeah. So their team, you know, the names aren't as big, but you're still going to have – you know, guys like Dale Howarchuk, Timo Solani, uh, probably the two biggest names that come to mind that are going to be that have committed to play in that game. But it's it's funny to see that they're actually going to have this Heritage Classic in October, uh, have an outdoor game in October already. Yeah. Um, I remember the last time they did a Heritage Classic um, out in the Canadian Midwest. Uh, or at least the the biggest one I remember is the first one when Edmonton played Montreal. And it was something like 10 below, 20 below during the game. It was ridiculously cold uh, because they played that game in like January or February. Um, but that was quite a few years ago. So 
see yeah. them doing in October will be uh, will be kind of interesting. So they may beat the snow, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, it was too cold to snow, when, <laughs> and when it gets down to that cold, so yeah. So, but but the players were quite uncomfortable because everybody had to wear hoodies underneath their jerseys, and it, it just wasn't uh, wasn't the best conditions for a good good game. Mm. So this this time around, they're playing the the Heritage Classic a little earlier, before it gets too cold in Winnipeg, because it does get really really cold in the winter time up there. <laughs> so, and speaking of the Edmonton Oilers, Wayne Gretzky hockey card uh, on the fifth of August, uh, his nineteen seventy nine OPG uh, rookie card, I believe it is is his rookie card, sold this week. Um, it is a mint condition card, so this thing's in fabulous shape. It sold for four hundred and sixty-five thousand. Yeah, that is something else. It is. God. The, it is the most expensive hockey card that that's ever been sold. Um, yeah. So, uh, and that and that particular card actually sold in two thousand eleven. That that exact same one uh, sold for ninety-four thousand in two thousand eleven. So somebody made a lot of money in so five years. Somebody made a lot of money in a few <laughs> years, yeah. Because he resold it for whoever it was resold it for four sixty five. So to see a hockey card go for a half a million dollars was pretty insane. Mm-hmm. And and I and I mentioned to you a couple of days ago when I saw the card, uh, I've seen that card before, like yeah, in that, real life. I've seen that card. Obviously yeah. not this one, but a copy of that card I have seen. It's you know. It was obviously wasn't as good a shape as this one, and it was quite a few years ago, and it was probably, if I remember right, in the order of you know hundred to two hundred bucks for that card, the one I saw it you know back in the days when I was a kid and collecting cards and go to card shows and stuff. Um, so it's interesting that you know it's it's a card I have seen before, but but this particular one, I guess because it's in such good shape, um, became worth so much. Yeah, that 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 is really amazing. I I buy cards uh, when I can get them uh, from time to time, uh, but uh, just lock them away, you know, like keep them for a while. And uh, I haven't really uh, pulled some out in a while and taken a look at them. But you know, something like that. If if I knew it could garner four, <laughs> if I knew it could garner half that much, yeah, right. Uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, God knows what, but, uh, that, that's really something else, you know, half a million dollars. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty crazy. So anyway, that's a nice little novelty story that, uh, that came up in the past couple of weeks. So that's pretty much it. All I have for stories, um, you know, is is in terms of news items. So let's go ahead and move on to, uh, one of the other topics we wanted to talk about. And that's a little bit more about the world cup. We went into depth last time on who made what rosters. Um, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this week. Uh, we don't want get, to get too crazy with it, but talk a little bit about, you know, how the tournament is going to be laid out and, um, you know, what, what our initial impressions are on, on the thing. But, um, well, basically the way the tournament's going to work is you've got two pools of teams. There's eight teams total. You've got two pools, A, Pool B, uh, pool A has Canada, Czech Republic, Europe, and the USA. Pool B has Finland, North America, Russia, and Sweden. And the way it's going to work is everybody in, in each pool is going to play each other. So USA will play Europe, Czech Republic, and Canada, and, 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 you know, and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everybody plays everybody within each pool. And then at the end of that, the top four remaining teams or the top two teams from each pool play in a crossover semifinal. So that means the first place team in pool A will play the second place team in pool B in the first semifinal game. And then the second semifinal game will have the first place team in pool B play the second place team in pool A. Nice. And that's a single game elimination. And then the two, the two winners of those two games move on to the championship and the two teams remaining play a best of three series in the championship. Right. For the world cup. Right. So, so the whole tournament only lasts from the 17th of September to October 1st. So the whole thing is a very, very quick tournament. Right. Um, Every team in the tournament plays at least three games 
up to, well, if you lose in the semifinal. So six of the eight teams are only going to play four games, three or four games. Right. In the whole tournament. And it gets down to the final two by the 25th. So the 17th to the 25th, if you turn off your television for that week, you're going to miss the whole thing. Right. That's right. That's right. the whole second week of it essentially is the best of three final with the two remaining teams. That's right. That's right. So, so what are your initial thoughts on, uh, you know, any spotlight teams that you come up with? I, well, uh, I see that, um, you know, uh, I think we may have touched on it last podcast, but, uh, definitely group B is the stronger of the groups. Um, then, and, you know, as, as I see it, any one of those teams could, uh, and, and, you know, we're speculating, and, you know, watch Team Europe win it. But, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, any one of those teams in Group B has a legitimate shot to make the semifinals, to win the group. Even Finland uh, could, could, could do it um, because there's not many games. They, they, they really, you know, when it comes to one game in hockey, anybody can win, you know. Yeah. So um, I, I give that group the the best shot of of putting uh, two strong teams into the semifinals, and and if if I look at Group A, you know we start playing the United Team USA plays they start the very first game. Yep. Play against Team Europe, open up the whole thing, and the, that night uh, the the Czech Republic team uh, Ch- uh, the team Czech Republic plays Canada. Yep. And you know from from that point. Uh, I see, you know, Team USA and Team Canada as being the the, the elite, the best in Group A, and I. I but I, I, I'm hoping that uh, that that uh, game that they have on the 20th really sets us up for, a, uh, if not before then, a great uh, World Cup. I, I think there's it's going to be a great uh, thing. The, the team from North America is very intriguing. Um, they're they're going to be. Uh, they could. Uh, pull off an upset and 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 make it into the semifinals very easily. Uh, that's you know that and 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 you know we've sat here and speculated on things a lot. Yeah. Gonna... And I tell you, a lot of the experts that are out there, I've been watching a lot of the press on this, and nobody's given North America any chance. You know, they're saying, yeah, they've got a lot of talent, but they don't have any experience against the you know the best of the NHL. Uh, you know, the best experienced players of the NHL guys with lots and lots of Stanley cup playoffs experience. And, and you're dealing with, you know, kids under 23, nobody's given North America a shot. And you know what? They could come out and win the whole thing. It, yeah. You know, they, they could, they have something that the other teams don't. And that's the youth that they have. Yeah. These guys, you know, you know, I know, I know it's not the same, but the beer leagues that I skate in, <laughs> these yeah. young these young kids that skate in these leagues can skate and skate and skate you know by the third period i'm i'm gasping for air and these guys are still going so you know i know it's not the same thing but you know that that's counts for something that right that youth factor that they have right and and you know if they play to their strength uh i think they can surprise some people in that tournament right and i agree with you that team europe is probably the weakest team in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, some of the, a lot of the experts, again, agree the same. They, they're they thinking Europe and, and North America will be uh, the bottom teams in the two different pools. Uh, and I definitely think that USA and Canada are two of the stronger teams in the field. Um, but uh, like you said, it's a short tournament. Uh, you know, each team only has three games prove themselves they stumble one game that that could that could knock them out right if they can't if they can't recover i don't know what the tiebreaker situation is because you know potentially everybody could you know end up one and one four-way tie or one and one then it comes down to tiebreakers and then then you just never know what you're going to get so that's right that's that's right so um you know it's going to be fun to watch for sure it's going to be entertaining i'm hoping that the players uh, the player association was the biggest ones pushing for this tournament. So uh, this is something the owners will be holding their breath, hoping that their guy doesn't get hurt. Right. Um, so I'm hoping that the players do give it their all or, you know, at least probably won't see NHL playoff intensity, but at least more intensity than what you see in the regular season anyway. Um, 
it'll definitely be entertaining. But also, I wanted to add, too, that I created a, uh, a Google Calendar that has all the games listed on each day. Um, if you like using Google Calendar and you want to add these games to your calendar, I've created a link uh, for a Google Calendar that you can just subscribe to or whatever they call it. You know, you just go on there. Uh, but if you look in the show notes for this uh, episode, you'll find that link uh, under the, um, the World Cup section of my show right notes. Um, so just click on that link and you can, uh, you can put that put all the games in your Google calendar and that way you won't miss a thing, but, um, Excellent. should be a fun tournament for sure. I agree. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I won't miss, uh, I won't miss any of team USA's games and I'll probably wind up watching a lot of team Canada. I, I just think that you'll, you'll see, uh, a, a pretty, pretty strong intensity Wayne, uh, like you said, might not be uh, NHL playoff intensity, but you know, in Canada, it's going to be – they're going to want to win that. Uh, the home crowd is, is definitely going to show up. Yep. <laughs> and uh, those guys will play for it. You know, they, they're going to play for it. It's, it's not of the Olympics type uh, uh, hype, but it's, it's not going to be, you know, a preseason game to these guys either. Uh, there's yeah. a definite meaning for, for, for winning this. Well, if they could create um, this tournament – because it's been off and on over the past several years, you know – tournament goes on for a couple of years and then it took a six-year hiatus and goes on again for a couple of years if they could get to a point where they're having this tournament each and every you know two years four years whatever they decide to do um make it a tradition you know it, it basically what they're trying to do is create a tournament similar to the world cup soccer right tournament you know that is the biggest tournament in the world right of any sporting event the whole entire world, with the exception of the U.S., gets into that one. Yeah. So, uh, and I think that's kind of what they're trying to accomplish, but they have to have it consistently. Mm -hmm. You know, every, whatever they decide, if it's going to be every four years, every two years, every three years, whatever they decide, but have it religiously each and every period that they determine. Right. And then over, you know, once you have three or four of these in place, um, I think we'll we'll get to a point where everybody involved will want to win that thing. Yeah, I. So, anyway, moving on. Um, the last thing we wanted to talk about today um, was the upcoming, and we really haven't talked about it at all. Obviously, the Las Vegas um, has been awarded a team in the NHL. They've yet to name their team, although from what I'm seeing. Uh, announcement is coming soon. It may they may have it by the end of uh, by the time we record the next time around. Because uh, the last thing I saw was the owner wants the name in place uh, before those preseason games that LA is playing in their rink, right? Uh, so that they can capitalize on some merchandising. They're going to have fans in the building. They want to be able to have jerseys and merchandise to sell. So I think he wants his name, logo, and team colors in place by the time those uh, preseason games in, in their arena take place. Right. right. So we expect probably within the next probably week to three weeks to have an announcement from them uh, as to what their team name is going to be. And I'm not going to go and bother into speculating what their team name is. There's a lot of names out there. You can look up the stories yourself. But, um, but what I did want to talk about is the expansion draft because it's going to be a factor in how teams move players around. Uh, it already has been with some of the signings we've seen this summer uh, and some of the, the contracts that we've seen. You can look kind of between the lines and see a lot of players out there who are going to be out there. And last night I found, and I I can't figure out why I hadn't realized it, but on generalfanager.com, which is one of the sites that we look at for salary cap information, they have a nice utility on that website that you can go through and you can do kind of a mock draft, mock expansion draft, and come up with a team that for, but, you know, obviously at this point in the season, you know, things are going to change wildly between now and, you know, the expansion draft isn't for basically about 10 months from now. Um, it happens next June. Um, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit because it's something we're going to have to 
keep in mind as the season goes on on everything that's it's going to be kind of a factor right with all, with all the transactions right so do you have the rules right in front of you if you want to I, go to- I don't I oh, I'm, okay I don't have them um you you had mentioned uh when we did some prep on this, uh, the the rules, and that's an important part of this. Yeah, I'll, I um, have them. So let me go down through them real quick on, on how the rules are, are going to work. So essentially what you have is the draft is going to take place in two phases. First phase is where the existing 30 teams protect their players. And then the second phase is the Las Vegas team gets to choose from the remaining players. So in terms of teams that are protecting here's the rules that they have to go by Um, the clubs have two options for players that they wish to protect in the expansion draft so option one is they can choose seven forwards three d and one goaltender Mm -hmm. option two they can choose eight skaters so they can sacrifice two players let's say for example they have four d's that they want to keep well they can keep four d and four forward or they can keep seven forwards three d so right. if they stick to the seven, three, and one, they get to keep two more players. So I would imagine most teams are going to do that. Right. They're not going to do that the the eight skaters route because they lose out on two players unless unless it's a team that's in salary cap trouble and they get guys they want to get rid of. But anyway, we'll see. My speculation is they'll go with option one. Secondly. All players who have currently effective and continuing no movement clauses at the time of the expansion draft and who decline to waive such clauses must be protected and will be counted towards their club's applicable protection limits. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty self-explanatory there. If you've got a no movement clause, you have to be protected by your team unless you waive it. Now, guys, the way I understand it, with no trade clauses, which is a little different than a no movement clause, uh, those guys don't have to be protected. Right. So That's a good the, point, Wayne. But the no movement clause guys is guys have to be protected. Right. So third, all first and second year professionals, as well as all unsigned draft choices, will be exempt from selection and will not be count towards their applicable uh, protection limits. So that's basically your 22 and under guys, or for the most part, your 21 and under guys. Right. Um, so, you know, o- Oilers won't have to protect Connor McDavid. He, he's, he's a second-year pro, so, you know, he's automatically protected. That's so, right. So that protects the teams that have made investments into young guys, which I think is good. Yeah. So that's pretty much the um, – You know, I thought General Fanager did a good job, too, of grouping all of those players for each team. Oh, yeah, that utility is it's amazing. Excellent. Is amazing. Yeah. I was playing with it all night last night. Yeah. So as far as – players that need to be exposed here's what the existing teams have to do Uh, all clubs must meet the following minimum requirements regarding players exposed for the selection of the expansion draft number one one defenseman who is a under contract next year and not this year but next year Mm -hmm. and b played in 40 or more nhl games the prior season or 70 more games in the prior two seasons so they have to expose one player that's still in a contract. You're basically a veteran defenseman. Right. Uh, Number two, they have to expose two forwards who meet the above guidelines. So that are under contract for the next season and played 40 games in the last season or 70 more games the prior two seasons. Mm -hmm. Number three, they got to expose one goaltender who is under contract next season or who will be a restricted free agent at the expiration of his current contract immediately prior to 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. And then if the club elects to make a restricted free agent goaltender available in order to meet this requirement, that goaltender must have received his qualifying offer prior to submission of the club's protected list. And fourth, all players with potential career ending injuries who have missed more than 60 games in the previous season or who have otherwise been confirmed to have a career-threatening injury. So your uh, Nathan Hortons, uh, Chris Pronger. There's a bunch of guys around the league that are still in a contract that won't play anymore. Right. Um, they can't be used. Uh, they can't expose those guys. That's right. 
So, but they don't have to protect him either. So, unless unless the Vegas team essentially wants that player, but I doubt that. So that's pretty much the rules for the teams, the thirty existing teams. Now, the regulations for Vegas, what they have to do is it says the Las Vegas franchise must select one player and only one player from each of the existing thirty teams mm-hmm. for a total of thirty players. So they can only choose one player from each team. And they have to choose at least one player from each team. So it's kind of weird. I've never seen that that way before. Number two, the Vegas franchise must select the following number of players at each position. And these are minimums. Because if you do the math, they don't add up to 30. They must select at least 14 forwards, 9 defensemen, and 3 goalies. Mm -hmm. Number three, the Vegas franchise must select a minimum of 20 players who are under contract for the 2017-18 season. So they can't just draft a bunch of pending unrestricted free agents. and (laughs) Right. And, and, you know, basically they have to pick 20 guys that are under contract for the next season. Right. So at bare none, they they, they start with with a team that's ready to go. Uh, Las Vegas franchise must select players with an aggregate expansion draft value that's between 60 and 100% of the prior season's upper limit for the salary cap. So, again, they can't just draft a bunch of $600,000 guys. Right. They're, they're going to have to pick some some one, two, and $3 million uh, players. Yep. And the Las Vegas franchise may not buy out any of the players selected in the expansion draft earlier than the summer of the following first Season. So they got to wait a year before they can buy any of them out. Mm-hmm. And the last rule is the 30 NHL clubs must submit their protection list by 5 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, June 17th. And then the Vegas team must submit their expansion draft selections by 5 p.m. on June 20th. So they got three, di- three days to figure out who they want. And then the announcement uh, will go out to the world on the 21st on the 20 or the 30 players that uh, that they select. So I know that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot that'll to digest. Of, that'll be a hell of a war room. It took for me those three days, you know? It, yeah. It took me, <laughs> it took me a while to digest all that, but I I think I've got it figured out. So, but yeah. for those of you who want to just play around to see if you're, you know, who your team might lose that utility on general manager is a fantastic utility. Yes, it, it basically is. it basically puts you through the whole process of, you know, first you got to go down through all 30 teams and protect the 11 players that they're going to protect. And it only gives you the list of protected players. It only gives you the list of players that are eligible to be protected. That's right. So those those young kids that they talk about that are automatically exempt, they're not included in that. That's right. There, there was one team, Wayne, that had eight or seven or eight already protected because those players had just as you say a bunch no of no tra- no yeah no movement clause. Was that and Chicago? It might have been Chicago. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me it could have been. Could've I can't been remember. Chicago. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, I seem to remember that as well. Um, and, and I actually went through, and let me. Uh, I actually went through last night and did the whole process. <laughs> I actually did a mock draft, and of course, this is going to be completely off the wall because I did it in you know in about probably a thirty minute time span. Went down through and just click, 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 click. You know, protect you, 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 you know, taking you know, not really thinking about it a whole lot on who I'd protect and and who I'd pick. But let me give you a team that I have come up with for um for Vegas based on what we know today. So first of all, the team that I, that I that I picked has a salary cap hit of sixty four million dollars. Uh, so they are eight point nine million dollars under the ceiling, and they're well above the floor. They meet eighty seven percent of the percentage that they I think they said required sixty to one hundred percent. So we're well in that ballpark. I picked twenty five guys who are under contract for next year, and here are the guys that I got. All right. Alexander Radulov oh, okay. from Montreal. Clark MacArthur for Ottawa. Drew Stafford from Winnipeg. So obviously these are some of your veteran forwards. UC Jokinen gets picked off of Florida. That's what I have. Milan Mihalik comes from Toronto. Matt Reed comes from Philadelphia. 
Lars Eller gets picked off of the Capitals. And it seems like these, well, they're in order of salary, so they kind of are getting younger as I go down through the list. Matt Stajan comes from uh, Calgary. Kevin Hayes comes off the Rangers. Yeah. Uh, Joe Colburn comes off of the Avalanche. Brock Nelson comes from the Islanders. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lewis comes from the Kings. Yeah. Joaquin Nordstrom comes from Carolina. Uh, Jacob Josephson comes from New Jersey. Anton Lander comes from Edmonton. Jay Bowmeister, now moving on to defenseman. Jay Bowmeister comes from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Johnson from Columbus. Mm -hmm. Josh Georges comes from Buffalo. Johnny Aduya comes from Dallas. Some pretty good defensemen there. Oh, yeah. yeah. C Simon Dupre comes from uh, Anaheim. Eric Gud Gudbranson comes from Vancouver. Uh, Brendan Dillon comes from San Jose. Matt Dumba comes from Minnesota. And Ryan Ellis comes from Nashville. I seem to pick a lot more defensemen than, uh, than forwards. And I think a lot of it is because they, because they can only keep, keep three. And the way I did it was, um, you know, I did the 7-3-1 rule for every team right. regardless. And and didn't you think that's the way the fan the, the Fanager set it up? They they really I don't think they they're looking at that second option of eight skaters. You they, could do it because there were times where I picked eight forwards and it would wipe out all the defensemen would like gray out, so you couldn't pick any defensemen. And I'm like, oop, I picked too many forwards. So so the the way they have it programmed is you could do the eight skaters of any position. Um, right. But uh, but yeah, I I stuck to the seven three one rule. So yeah. continuing on, I've got Ian Cole coming from. Pittsburgh, Luke Shen from Arizona, yeah. Vili Poca coming from Chicago. So that's all your defenses. So obviously, pick quite a few defensemen there. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I think there there's better quality there with teams only being able to keep three D. There's going to be some good defensemen available for them. Yeah, and agree. we talked about goaltending. Uh, goaltenders. I've got Ben Bishop, Jimmy Howard, and Malcolm Subban. Yeah, that, that is so, really, so really interesting. I mean, the number of players that you and I agreed on, and I didn't do I didn't do it like you did, Wayne. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't pick the team. I just went through and picked names and, and had, you know, okay, these seven guys probably, but in case not, I'll take the one guy's name and I'll write it down. And uh, it, was, it was so much fun. I had a blast doing this. Yeah, we could probably do this, you know, several times throughout the year. If things go yeah. a little slow, we can – Hey, let's have a mock draft and see what we come up with as, yeah. as of today. Yeah, so that's right. As of today, this is the team that I've got for <laughs> Las Vegas. That was and very it, good. And it's very, they're going to be a, you know, a New Jersey type team, of a defense first type team, um, which I think is what's going to ultimately going to have to happen because they're not going to have those elite level uh, forwards. They're just not. I mean, the 30 yeah. teams are going to do what they need to do to keep those elite forwards that they have. You know, unless unless they're gonna unless they're gonna expose a player that Las Vegas might have an interest in, and there's one or two of them. Uh, uh, Pat, uh, Evander Kane comes to mind. Yeah, I thought uh, about him. You I'm know, like, you know, Buffalo may want to get rid of him because of his off ice issues, right? And they might expose him, uh, and you know, hopefully, and he can skate. I mean, yeah. he's blazing fast. He's a great player. Yeah, I almost I almost left him exposed when I did Buffalo, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stick to just on ice talent, and he's too talented to let go. But yeah, they may. Who knows? They may do that. Yeah. To 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 get rid of a problem that guy that way, but yeah, but yeah, and the other interesting thing with you know you and I t talked about it, the goaltending. No matter what, they're yeah. going to get some decent goaltenders because there's oh. sev several teams around the league that have. That have two good goalies. No question about it, Wayne. That's going to probably be the area where they can, they, they don't have any trouble loading up uh, right. at, at the goaltender position. Uh, ben Bishop, uh, I, I, because I think Vasilevsky, I think you and I are on the same page on that. I think Vasilevsky is going to be the starter, starter in Tampa Bay very soon. Yeah. Especially after his performance in the playoffs this year. Yep. And that leaves Ben Bishop with a big contract. And he's a great goaltender. He's not just a good one. Uh, that that they're they're going to have to let one of those guys go. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, the only thing with Ben Bishop that that may make it so that they that Vegas doesn't pick him is the fact that he'll be a unrestricted free agent next summer. So they're going to have to pick him and then turn around and try to sign him before sign him. before uh, the first of July, and he may not want to go there. So, um, but the other kind of interesting thing is with with Ben Bishop and Jimmy Howard. I don't believe they were ever teammates um, at Maine, but both attended the University of Maine, and Bishop was the um, was the starter right after Jimmy Howard left. I think Bishop came in right after Howard left Maine. Right. Uh, but they, they, they both have that Maine connection to see. It would be kind of interesting to see them both end up on the same team. Right. And then you have the intriguing thing in the goaltending thing again, where you have, uh, for example, in Dallas, they have Kari Lettinen. Yep. And they have Auntie Niemi. Yep. Now, Niemi's got, I think Niemi's got a, a bigger contract. Okay, he's he's signed for more money, and I could be wrong. It may be that Lettinen has more money, but you know uh, they're going to probably protect Le- um, uh, Niemi. He's got a Stanley Cup. You know he's been through the wars and everything. They they probably don't want to let him go. Yeah, aren't they both about the same age? They I think they are. Yeah, yeah maybe a year or two separate. Yeah. And so there's Car- Kari Lettinen who can play. He can play in the NHL. Uh, you know he's proven himself with yeah. more than one team. Uh, so y- you never know. Uh, that he may win a starting job over Bishop. Who who knows how, how it'll go. Another situation I came up with too is in Florida. You've got Roberto Luongo and yep. you've got James Reimer both there. Right. Um you know, I'm I'm not sold that Reimer is definitely you know, he's definitely not a franchise goalie type, but he'd be good enough until they, you know, secure a younger goaltender uh for the future. Oh um I would think that uh, you know Luongo's like 37, 38 years old. I would think that he wants to. He chose to go to Florida because, um, for you know, personal reasons. He doesn't want to leave that team. That's right. So I don't know if Florida would do him a favor and, and keep him and not yep. expose him, which would leave Reimer exposed. Yep. I don't know what they do. But, you know, you've got two decent goalies there. But there's, there's several teams around the league that have two fairly decent oh. goaltenders. Yeah. Um, in, in the case of Luongo, you know, you're looking, once a guy gets 430 wins, I mean, the number of, of guys in the top 10 that haven't made the Hall of Fame is like one or two uh, that have won 425, 430 games. And that's, there's Luongo. He's yeah. probably going to make the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He's never won a Stanley Cup. And he's, you know, he's, he's not been, uh, you know, a Hart Trophy recipient or anything like that. He's, he's his body of work is going to get him, so, you know, uh, at least on the list. Right. Uh, so, um, I, and, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more that, uh, you know, you got uh, Michael Neuverth, you've got Matt Murray. Uh, since, since uh, um, uh, what's his name, can't be protected, uh, I, I mean, uh, will be protected, uh, Flurry. Uh, yeah, he has a no movement, right? Yeah. Right. So he's going to be protected. He's going to be the guy that they're going to keep. So here comes a guy who's won a Stanley Cup. Just yep. won a Stanley Cup. Yep. And, and uh, Yeah. And 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 the thing with him too um you know that brings up you're going to see teams may try to trade goaltenders. Right. But how many teams you know most teams are pretty set at at the goalie position nowadays. Right. And who's going to want to take on a guy that is in, you know, like it or not, the decline of his career. And some believe he's a complete head case. You know, he's had a lot of, you know, your goaltenders, the mental part of the game is a big part of the goaltending game. And uh, there's a lot who believe that uh, a lot of the problems that Flurry has had over the past several seasons has been mental with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so who's going to want to take on... You know, an aging goalie and a possible, you know, mentally fragile goalie. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you know, he has to be protected, but I don't think Pittsburgh is going to be able to trade him either. Yeah, I agree. Not unless so, it's someplace he wants to go. So they're they're in a spot. Yeah. Yeah, they're in a spot. So because yeah. they're not going to want to trade Matt Murray either. <laughs> I, and, 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 you know, that's right. You, you know... 
You know, something else, uh, Wayne, that I found very, very intriguing about this is just how teams are going to value their defensemen. And you know how important of a position that is. Right. Uh, th- th- they are going to have a very tough job, most teams, hiding or uh, cloaking the defensemen that they want to keep and not exposing several, not just one, but, you know, two or three. Yeah. And really holding their breath. Oh, my God, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, because there's there's several teams that are loaded in defensemen. Yep. Uh, and um, – at this, they're going to have to expose two or three of them. Well, they may uh, trade too. Yep. There's that. They, you know, they they those are teams that are probably going to try to move uh, one or two of those strong defensemen in hopes that they can get something for them. The Arizona Coyotes, they're yep. loaded. They got great. They got a great defensive core. Nashville's another one. Nashville. Yeah. Right? And and they're not, not going to be able to keep them all. Not Boston. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I beg to differ. I think Boston's got some some great players, uh, you know, and I've been keeping tabs on trying to learn more about about you, you fellas there, uh, Wayne. Uh, yeah. You know, so uh, I, I've been wa- listening to some podcasts and some Boston fellas. There's, so uh, there's not a lot of guys in Boston that are that are real high on the core defensemen that they have. Everybody's in a hurry to get uh, that kid out of BU and get him on the team. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, name escapes me. Yeah, and he escapes me too. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 this was, I mean, I, I was holding my breath the whole time. My God. And I, believe it or not, I'm a Rangers fan. Kevin Hayes is the name who I had, uh, you know, as the guy that uh, there. And, and again, you could look at some of these teams. They're, they'll have no trouble letting their goalie core open up for for uh, for Las Vegas and the Rangers happen to be one of them because Henrik is protected and the other guys you know believe me um, as as good as uh, uh, I, I feel good about anti Ranta but he there's no harm exposing him because I don't think that uh, uh, Las Vegas will have to worry about uh, selecting someone like that uh, who's still developing as a goalie yep uh, in the NHL and uh, you know and then you look at the guy that we lost, uh, Cam Talbot. He's protected uh, on the Edmonton uh, yep. uh, with Edmonton. He cannot be a part of this. So it's very interesting. It's extremely interesting. This thing. I encourage people to go out and, and do it, like you like you said, uh, and just take a look at it. And I did not pick a mock team, but I, I tell you what, when we when we get done tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I might just do that with my own. Yeah, and, and, you know, we'll do it through several times throughout the year, and this team will change from year to year. And maybe what we should do is probably two to three times throughout the year, you and I should sit down together and run through it and have our official HockeyNuts.com uh, uh, Las Vegas team update. And, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep <laughs> updating this team. And, and we'll, That's a we'll, great we'll, idea. Yeah. We'll pick, <laughs> We'll pick our own team. This is the team that we would take if we were the Las Vegas franchise. Yeah, you'll have names pop on and pop off quickly. Yep. Uh, but uh, that you did, you get I, you get kudos from me. You come up with a good <laughs> name and you pick the guy off our team that I I think definitely that's going to be uh, exposed the most. Kevin uh, Hayes. Yeah. 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 And and I think you made. And I a good almost point. picked Jimmy Hayes for for Boston, but then I'm like, you know what? A guy like Malcolm Subban would have. Uh, some value there's there. I mean, he was a first round draft choice. Yeah. I, I had down, uh, two, two forwards for, uh, for Boston. I had Ryan Spooner or Riley Nash. I didn't pick Malcolm Subban, but, yep. uh, uh, you know, Boston is the covets defenseman and, you know, Bobby Orr, the whole thing. I, yep. I just think that that is something that is is very intriguing about this is how teams will hold on to those defensemen because like you said and we've seen the goalie core is is wide open they're going to get a good goalie in Las Vegas no question about it whether or not he performs there you don't know but they're going to get a top name goalie that's going to happen McAvoy McAvoy is his name I was trying to think of his name that kid in Boston that's Oh yeah McAvoy Charlie yeah. McAvoy yeah he's going to be a good one Charlie McAvoy that's the guy Yeah yeah, if you listen to some of their podcasts and you got you know who I'm talking about, 
Those guys really, really uh, put him up there as as a well, really the, good prospect. The, for the, or, the organization is 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 high on him, so yeah. I don't know if he'd be as dominant as uh, uh, Zdeno Chara was. I wouldn't say he is anymore, but as he was, um, but he he'll be he'll be in their top pairing when he's ready to come out for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree, but yeah, so we'll do that. Um, you know, three or four times throughout the year, we'll 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 do an update to our Las Vegas team, and <laughs> yeah, and we'll that's come up a with our, idea. at least as long as uh, General Fanager's little utility continues to work as it does. Yeah, who goes <laughs> to those guys too, man? That's a great thing they come up with. I'm oh, telling. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a lot of to fun. The, to the guys listening to this show, please take a look at that. That really does uh, for the guys who study hockey like uh, we do from time to time and look at articles. Uh, it, it creates a lot of interest and it's a very good, very good tool to use. Yep. Yep. And I'm hearing through the grapevine too, that, uh, people in the NHL organizations use that tool. Not, not oh, yeah. so much the expansion tool, but the, the general manager site as a whole, yep. they refer to it as, you know, as a resource for them. So yeah. it's kind of interesting how they've, how they found a nice little niche there. So, yeah. So, all right. Well, other than that, unless you have anything else to add, I think we are pretty much done for today. I, do, I don't. Uh, we went through it perfect. I, I, uh, I, I, these things are exciting to me, and they end too quickly. Yep. <laughs> I get going. I could go for a little longer, but uh, yep. uh, it was okay. good work with you again. Well, our next uh, scheduled recording for our next podcast is on the 31st of August. Uh, so that is the date that we're planning on recording next. So we'll get you all caught up uh, between now and then on everything that happens uh, from from now until then on the next one on the 31st. And we'll probably know more about, uh, well, we'll certainly know Jimmy Vesey's decision by then. And we'll certainly have some more information on the World Cup. Uh, because we'll be getting very close to the start of that tournament, or at least the the pre the pre tournament schedule of that. I think uh, starts about a week after we record, uh, so the eight teams should be in their training camps by then. Um, yes. So we'll certainly and and all these smaller, the lower level leagues, the junior leagues, and and the KHL and all those will have started by then. In fact, I believe the KHL has already started their preseason schedule at this point. Um, haven't really followed much of that league, but it's kind of hard to follow that league because um, a lot of the information coming out of Russia is in Russian on the internet. <laughs> yeah, that's not a romance language, <laughs> and and it's not a la it's not a language I know. So yeah. they do have an English site, but it's uh, you know it's it's not a very well organized site, and it's hard to follow uh, what's going on there. But you know, yeah. it may be something we we'll talk about. And I know college hockey will still be a good month away on the 31st. So there won't be a whole lot to talk about there. Uh, things are pretty quiet around the world of college hockey up until uh, about uh, mid-September on that one because, you know, there's rules and stuff that they have to follow. They can't start before a certain date. So things are very, very quiet around the world of college hockey until uh, everybody has their midnight madness. Uh, a lot of the big, big name teams uh, have a midnight madness. Saw a picture earlier this week. Uh, Boston College had a picture of their arena. And, of course, basketball and hockey both play in that arena. They had half the arena set up for hockey, and then they had the basketball floor on the other half. Oh, wow. So they did a combined midnight. I don't know what year that was, but it was pretty cool to see half yeah. the basketball floor, half the hockey rink yeah. in one arena, and they, did a, <laughs> and they did a combined midnight madness for both teams. So yeah. that was quite interesting to see. Yes. But anyway, you know, off on a tangent. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and end it for uh, this week. And uh, so in, in a couple of weeks, we will uh, pick this up where we left off and we'll go from there. All right. So uh, have a good night. I know you got some. Good night, rest. everybody. <laughs> all right. Good night. Well, there you have it. We could have gone on all night talking about hockey, but we're trying to keep it reasonably short for your sake. If you like the show, please show us support by subscribing to it using your favorite podcatcher program or app. You can also share it with your friends. The Hockey Nuts podcast can be found on major podcast search engines like iTunes and Google Play Music. Just search for the term 
the hockey nuts in those apps. If you'd like to give us feedback, you can email the show at feedback at thehockeynuts.com or you can leave us a voicemail in our mailbox at 919-960-1718. The number again, 919-960-1718. And we will address your feedback on future episodes of the Hockey Nuts podcast. You can also tweet me. I'm at WayneHalley9. And Steve, well, Steve is yet to get himself a Twitter account, although he says he is going to get one. So as soon as we have that for you, we'll let you know. Also, be sure to visit our website at thehockeynuts.com. The site is as new as the show, uh, but we have a blog going already, and I've been hard at work writing midsummer update articles on all 30 NHL teams. In the future, we'll be offering not only the blog, but all kinds of resources on that website, not just for hockey fans, but for those of you who want to get involved in the game in your area as a player, coach, official, or even the Samboni guy. As always, links that we mention in the show are available in the show notes for this episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Hockey Nuts Podcast, and until next time, we'll catch you at the rink.